Hello and welcome to part 3 of Let's Play the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. At the end of the last part, um, we were about to go to paragraph 189, so here we are now. Okay, um, the door opens into a short corridor which ends several meters ahead at another door, similar to the one you have just come through. You listen and hear nothing. You try the handle and it turns, allowing you into another room of a similar size. But this room is splendidly decorated with a polished marble floor and rough walls painted white. On each of the four walls hangs a painting and there is another door in the north wall. You can either go straight through the room, turn to 90, or you may stop to look at the paintings, turn to 25. Um, there's the, oh, there's the, uh, uh, the room. So that's uh, very nice. Anyway, we're going to look at the paintings, uh, 10 to 25. Uh, the paintings are portraits of men. Your spine shivers as you read the nameplate, the nameplate under the one on the west wall. It is that of Zagor. I don't know if it's pronounced Zagor or Zagor, I don't know, but I've always said Zagor, so I call him Zagor. It is that of Zagor, the warlock whose treasure you are seeking. You look at his portrait and realise you are pitting yourself against an awesome adversary. You have the feeling that you are being watched and notice the piercing eyes following you as you move. You find yourself drawn towards the portrait and your fear rises. Lose one skill point. Let's do that now. Um, do you have the courage to try to combat the warlock? You may either leave through the north door straight away, turn to 90, but treat this as an escape. Or you may look through your pack for a weapon to use against the warlock's power, turn to 340. Let's, um, let's turn to 340. At 340, um, you try various items of equipment against the gaze of the painting, but none seems to work. You may try any of the following if you have them. You can slash the painting with your sword, hold a jewel up in front of it, plunge a wooden stake into it, or throw cheese at it. Um, we are going to hold a jewel up in front of it, so turn to 31. If you have the jewel from the eye of the cyclops, you hold it in front of the warlock. His intimidating stare turns to an expression of pain. He obviously feels the jewel's power. Suddenly his eyes turn white and his expression goes limp. Your confidence gains as you realise you have won your first real battle. Gain two skill points. Put the jewel into your pack and leave through the north door. Turn to 90. So let's put our skill back to 12. Uh, so that gives us a clue that uh, obviously the, um, uh, the jewel is extremely useful and it's, it was a good idea that we went to get it. Anyway, we're going to 90. Uh, yeah, that gives you a clue as to how to defeat the warlock um, later on if you ever get up to him. Um, you open the door into a narrow passage and follow it northwards. Some meters up the passageway, it turns to the east, then turns to the north. However, at the second bend, there is a small alcove in the rock. It seems a convenient hiding place, and a large rock forms a comfortable seat. You may stop here and eat provisions if you wish. Um, do I need to? Uh, no. When you have rested, continue northwards. Turn to 253. Uh, the passageway ends in another wooden door, this time a small one with a carved bone handle. You listen but hear nothing coming from inside. You try the handle and the door opens into a pear-shaped room with a rough stone floor, making walking across it somewhat awkward. In one corner of the room is a pile of rubble, mainly stones and dust, but there are also two odd-shaped pieces of wood and a length of rope. A door in the north wall leads on. Will you examine the bits of wood, study the length of rope, leave through the north door? Um, what are we going to do? We are going to leave through the north door. I don't think this place is very nice if I remember. Um, 
so turn to 73. Yeah, I'm just consulting my notes from um, uh, from when I worked out the perfect route. So I don't think um, I don't think that room is very nice. If I remember, I, I just put down that we leave through the north door, uh, but I didn't write down why. Um, all right, so about 73. Uh, the passage ahead leads you northwards. The rocky floor becomes sandy until eventually you are walking on a sort of coarse sand. You notice the passage is widening and ahead you can hear a flowing river. You continue until you find yourself in a large cavern through which a river flows. Turn to 218. You are on the south bank of an underground river facing across its black depths. There appear to be four ways of crossing. To your left, a rusted bell bears the sign of ferry service, two gold pieces. Please ring. There is a small raft in front of you on the bank with a long stick resting beside it. You could punt across the river. A rickety old bridge crosses on the right. If you don't trust any of these, you may swim. Which will you choose? Ring the bell, punt the raft across, risk the bridge, and swim. Um, is there a yeah, there it is. Yeah, picture. I knew there's a picture. Uh, that's uh, yeah. There's the bell, the bridge, and the and the raft, which looks which looks like a bit of old fence, if you ask me. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to ring the bell. Uh, the bell gives a dull clang, and after a few moments, you see a withered old man climb into a small rowing boat moored on the north bank. He rows slowly across you, moors the boat and limps towards you. He asks you for three gold pieces. When you protest at the price, he mumbles some flimsy excuse about inflation. He begins to get angry at your protestations. Do you pay him the three gold pieces or threaten him? Um, we're going to pay him. I think if you don't pay him, he turns into a monster, and then you can either placate him by offering him more gold, or you can fight him, and he's pretty dangerous, actually. Um, he's some sort of... I can't remember what... I'm thinking he's a... I could be right, a werewolf or something? I, I don't know. He turns into something, and um, he's really deadly, so you want to pay him, especially as we have loads of gold from the chest we got earlier. So we're going to pay him the three gold pieces, turn to 272. Um, he calms down, takes the gold, uh, deduct this from your gold. Yeah, that's the paragraph. I think if you if you anger him and he starts to turn into uh, a monster or something like that, you offer him more gold. That's why it doesn't say here how much gold you give him because I think you have to offer him five gold or something if you if you anger him, or you don't have to offer any if you fight him and win. Um, yeah, so we we have to pay him three gold. So now we put that down to twenty-two. There we go. And where was I? Um, here. Um, he calms down, takes the gold, uh, deduct this from your gold, and rows you across to the north bank. After mooring the boat, he ambles off down a passageway. Turn to seven. Yeah, uh, swimming across is not a good idea. Um, you want to um, you want to get across as quickly and easily as possible. You are on the north bank of a fast-flowing river in a large underground cavern. Turn to 214. Oh, we're here now. Facing northwards, the rock face is smooth and glistening with moisture. Um, moss of many different hues grows on the surface. There is an eerie silence punctuated only by the splashings of the river as it flows behind you. You have three options. A passage runs off to the northwest. If you take this route, turn to 271. A large timber door is directly in front of you in the middle of the rock face. If you open the door, turn to 104. There's a third option overleaf. 
Another passage runs out along the river eastwards. To follow this along the river bank, turn to 99. Um, we are going to open the large timber door, 104. You find yourself in a short, narrow passageway with a door ahead to the north. You try this door, turn to 49. Um, the door squeaks open on rusty hinges. The room is dark and your eyes begin to adjust themselves as you close the door behind you. You hear a shuffling in the room, but before you can react, a blow to your head knocks you senseless. Lose two stamina points and turn to 122. So, we're now down to 12. 122. You awake with a throbbing head and look around. The room is about 8 metres square, um, with doors to the north and south. That would be 8 metres cube, really, wouldn't it? Because it's a room, not a, uh, a wall. Um, you have been dumped in the southwest corner. Standing motionless in the centre of the room are four men. At least they appear to be men. Their skin is a greeny-grey colour. Their clothes are tattered and torn, and they are all staring vacantly at the ceiling. One carries a club, one a scythe, one an axe, and one a pick. They are ignoring you completely. Around the room are various peasant-style weapons, pitchforks, axe handles, pointed sticks, etc. One or two shields and several barrels. In the northeast corner is a human corpse with a sword in one hand and a shield in the other. You move your hand up to your head to feel for signs of blood and you are uh, relieved to find you are not bleeding. But as your hand moves, the strange creatures in the centre of the room turn their eyes down towards you. Do you try to talk to them, jump to your feet and charge them with your sword, scramble for an exit through the south door? We are going to jump to our feet and charge them with the sword. 282. Um, the four creatures shuffling towards you are mindless zombies. Their vacant eyes suggest that their actions are controlled by a, um, by a will which is not their own. You are still too dizzy to think properly, but you must act quickly. The first zombie reaches you and prepares to swing his club. Uh, you must fight him. Okay, so, zombie. Um, let's get the old battle thing up. Okay, skill, stamina, enemy attack, my attack. Okay, what was his uh, skill and stamina? Seven and six. Let's put that in. Okay, let's do this. Um, Okay, so one roll for him, first of all, need to put it on that and that, there we go. Okay, he gets a 10, that's a 17 in total. I get a 6, that's an 18 in total, so... So, he gets 17, I get 18. So, he's down to 4. He gets a 9, that's uh, 16 in total. I get a 10, that's 22. So, 16 to 22. So he's down to 2 now. OK, one more hit. He gets a 6, that's 13 in total. I get a 10, that's 22. So, 13 to 22. so he is now dead. If you defeat the first zombie, add two luck points and turn to face the other three. Fight each in turn. Um, two luck points, do I need them? Nope. So 
So, who's the first zombie? A zombie with a scythe. I will write zombie scythe. Copy all this. And what was his stats? Six six. So he's up to six. That two. That. Whoops. That was a com full stop, not a comma. Change that. And then all this nonsense. There we go. Okay. Let's uh, let's do battle. Okay. Four. That's a ten for him. And I get a seventeen. So ten to seventeen. So I win that, so he's down to 4. Gets 8, that's um, um, 14, and I get 5, that's 17, so 14 to 17. So I win that one as well. He gets a 7, that's uh, 13, and I get 3, that's 15, so 13 to 15. So he is now dead. Who's the next one? A zombie with pick. So I shall call him zombie pick. Copy this. Call him zombie pick. All of his stats, 6-6 six, six as well. So just get rid of this nonsense. Whoops. Okay, let's do this. Two, that's eight for him and eighteen for me. So eight to eighteen, which means I win. Five, that's um, eleven for him and twenty for me. So twenty eleven or eleven twenty rather. So I win that one as well. Seven, that's thirteen for him, and that's nineteen for me, so thirteen nineteen. Which means he is dead, so one more. So the last one is called Zombie with an Axe, so call him Zombie Axe. Um his stats are six five, so change that to five. Get rid of that nonsense and that nonsense. Annoyingly, we haven't encountered the vampire. I hope we do, because I like encountering the vampire. Um, but I don't think that's it on the way. Maybe I will, I can't remember. Anyway, we're fighting this zombie. He gets a 13. I get a 19. So, 13 to 19. Which means he's down to 3. And he gets a 6, that's a 12, and I get an 18, so... 12 to 18, so he's down to 1 health, or 1 stamina. OK, last one, hopefully, should be. He gets a 7, that's 13, I get a 5, that's 17, so 13 to 17. And he is now dead. That's all the zombies dead without losing a single bit of stamina. That's because I have amazing skill, luckily. It offsets the awful stamina and awful luck that I got, but I think skill is the best one, really. That's the one you want. Um, and I did lose a skill point, but I got it back, didn't I? So, Anyway. If you defeat all four, turn to 115. Um, the poor wretches lying dead at your feet almost look happy to be relieved of the burden of life, but as you look down at them, you sense that you are not the only one to know of their deaths. Looking around the room, you may investigate the weapons lying around, go over to the dead body in the northeast corner, or check the barrels. We're going to check the body. Um, 313.
You check over the body. The poor wretch was obviously caught in the same way that you were, but his weaker skull shattered under the club's blow. He wears a suit of leather armour no better than your own, holds a wooden shield on one wrist, and clutches a steel-bladed sword in his other hand. In his pockets are eight gold pieces, and around his neck is a silver crucifix. You may take any two of these items you wish. Write them on your equipment list and turn to 221. Also add one luck and one skill point. Now we don't need that. Um, already at maximum on both. Um, okay, we're going to take the gold, so that's 8 gold, so that's up to 30. And we're going to take the sword, so I'll call that steel bladed sword. There we go. Okay, turn to 2 to 1. Oh yeah, that was the iron cyclops that we fought earlier. He's quite menacing. What are these mysterious items you have collected? Which have you written down first on your equipment list? We wrote the gold down first, so 110. You are now 8 gold pieces richer. You also find another 2 gold pieces in his boot. Hidden there for safety. So, put up now to 32, cause got, because we've got another, another 2 gold pieces. Turn to 319. Record the gold on your adventure sheet. 319. Um, to find the secret of the second item you've collected, turn to 221. So let's go there again. I think this is just a way of padding out the, the paragraphs, really. I mean, you know, they could easily do this on one whole thing. Um, Okay, we then got the the sword. We didn't get the other things, we were only allowed two, so the sword. 27. The sword is enchanted and will aid you in battle. As long as you use the sword, you may increase your initial skill by two points. You may also add two points to your current skill value. As we're at maximum, we'll just put it up to 14. There we go, so now we have 14 skill. Um. Add two points to your luck for finding this sword. We don't need that. Throw your old sword away and turn to 319. So, um, let's throw the old one away. Let's get rid of that. There we are. Um, if you would rather keep your own sword, leave your skill as it is and just take the luck bonus. I don't know why you'd want to do that. It's just stupid. Maybe you want the adventure to be more difficult or something, but you'd be a fool not to take the sword, as far as I'm concerned. Um, okay, now we've investigated both items, turn to 81. A noise startles you, prompting you to leave the room quickly. You walk up to investigate the north door, turn to 205. The door opens and you find yourself in a dark crypt of some kind. The room is very large. At one end is an altar and various coffins are strewn about the room. There is a door behind you in the south wall and also one in the west wall. If you want to investigate the room further, turn to 254. If the place gives you the creeps, you can leave via the west door. Turn to 380. Um, We are just going to leave via the west door. This is the room with the vampire in it. Um, you don't want to hang around here. Um, we didn't take the crucifix with us, so so battling the vampire make is a bit harder without the crucifix. Although if you have the, I think if you have the wooden stakes like I do, um, you, it's easier to kill him. But I think you need luck for it or something like that. But either way. He can kill you instantly if you you have to test your skill against him, and if you lose, which I probably wouldn't do, but if you lose, um, he hypnotizes you and kills you. So you, you don't want to muck around with this vampire. So let's just leave via the west door. 380. I don't think he has anything that we need, so just leave him. You are in a narrow east-west corridor. Looking westwards, you can see a crossroads ahead. You go on to the crossroads. Turn to 37. Um, turn to 37. Standing at the crossroads, you may go either north, west, or south. We are going to go... Where do we want to go? Um, 
north. So three six six. You are following a passageway which leads ahead to the north. After several meters it bends sharply to the east. You continue eastwards until you eventually come across a narrow opening in the north wall. You may go through this opening or continue eastwards. Through the opening we're going. 89. You climb through the opening and find yourself at the top of a narrow staircase leading downwards. Cautiously, you descend the stairs. 286. Now the narrow staircase is cut into the rock, and there are, are about 20 steps leading down. At the bottom of the steps, a passageway leads you into a large open chamber. This chamber stinks of putrefying flesh. The smell is so bad that you are tempted to turn back. Three bodies lie in the chamber. You may either search the bodies or tiptoe quietly through the room. What will you do? We're going to search the first body. 294. You find five gold pieces in the pockets of the corpse. Enter these on your adventure sheet and add one luck point for your, for your find. You may now either search the second body, search the third body, or tiptoe through the room northwards. I think after the first body you search, just put those five gold pieces in, that's 37 gold we have now. I think after the first body, the, the rest of them are nasty. I think the second one is actually a monster and he's quite deadly. If he manages to get a hit on you or something like that, he paralyzes you and kills you or well, eats you. Um, it's not very nice, so you want to avoid that really. So we're going to tiptoe through the room now. Uh, 107. You tiptoe through the room up a narrow staircase, ending up at the top of the stairs in a passage. That was easy, you think, and you begin to have second thoughts about whether it would have been worthwhile to search the bodies. If you want to return and search the bodies, starting with the third, turn to 148. If you want to press on, turn to 197. Don't search the bodies. They, one of them comes alive. It's, it, it isn't pretty. Um, 197. Unbelievable they try to tempt you like that. Um, at the top of the stairs, the passage turns sharply to the east. As you pause to get your bearings, you hear a creaking in the rock behind you. You spin round in time to see a heavy portcullis drop to seal off the passageway behind you. Your only way now is forward. You may either press on forward, turn to 48, or may check the walls for secret passages. Yeah, from this point onwards, we're in the, we're in the maze of Zagor. It's an annoying little labyrinth that goes all the way around. It's very difficult to get out of. Luckily, I've, I've noted down the perfect route through this. It's so, so easy to get lost. Um, one of the keys we need is in this labyrinth as well. So, y you can't... You can't just get through this. You have to find what the key you need and get through the labyrinth. It's it's the most difficult part of the game, in my opinion. Um, I'll just do a bit and then I'll I'll stop the video. Okay, so we're going to press on forward. Um, what you don't want to do is um, check for passages too often because often if you check for passages, um, you, it'll say there's none and then it will say that you've attracted a creature and you'll have to do battle. It's really annoying. Um, you are in an east-west corridor. If you go east, you will turn a corner northwards. To go this way, turn to 391. To go west, turn to, th turn to 60. Um, um, where do we want to go? We are going to go east. Um, yeah, we're going to go east, so 391. You are at the south end of a north-south corridor. Looking northwards, you can see a passage coming off from the east wall. Do you want to go up to this passage to check for secret passages as you walk northwards to go south following a bend to the west? Um, here we are actually going to check for secret passages, so 362.
As you try the walls up, up the passageway, a secret door opens up along the west wall, 10 to 177. This is what we want to think. Um, yeah, you are standing in a north-south passage. To the north, you can see a passage off to the east. To investigate, turn to 52. To the south, the passage turns westwards. You may go to the southern end of the passage by turning to 391. In the west wall in front of you is a secret door. To go through this, turn to 175. Um... Where do we want to go? Um, we're going to go to the secret door, 175. Which is easy, just there. You are standing in a narrow corridor. Behind you is a secret door to the east. Ahead of you is a crossroads. To go through the door, turn to 177. To walk to the crossroads, turn to 267. We're going to go to the crossroads. You now stand at the crossroads. To go north, to go south, to go west, to go east. OK, we're going to go north, 312. So easy to get lost here. Um, you follow a long, narrow passageway which goes north and west, then north again, and eventually you find yourself at a crossroads. Turn to 308. Um, you are standing at a crossroads. Um, to go uh, uh, um, to the west, the passageway goes on a few metres and turns northwards. Um, to the north, the passageway ends at a door. To the east, the passage continues and eventually turns southwards. Looking south, the passage goes on as far as you can see. Um, West, north, south, or east. Um, we are going to go north, so to 54. You are standing outside a door at the north end of a north-south passage. To go south, turn to 308. To go th th through the door, turn to 179. And this is what we want. I think this leads to the key. Yeah, it's, and we're here with the Minotaur. That's where we want. That's where we want to be. You have entered a large square room. Broken pottery lies scattered all about. One large clay vase is untouched and is full of clear liquid. A large bowl is full of gold coins. As you enter the room, the door slams behind you and you swing round to face a strange-looking creature. Half man, half bull, who is glaring at you. He is a Minotaur and he stalks towards you. He lowers his head, horns pointing at your chest, and charges. You must fight him. After three attack rounds, you manoeuvre yourself round to be able to run through the door. And you can escape, then it's saying. Um, okay, so, so let's fight the Minotaur, and then I'll just investigate the room, and then I'll end the video. So let's fight the Minotaur. Yeah, skill 9, stamina 9. Okay. So, Minotaur. Skill, 9, Stamina, 9, um, Enemy Attack, My Attack. OK, let's do this. Um, so we can escape after three rounds, but but we have to do three rounds at least. So we can't escape till then, but I'm not going to because we need what's in here. Um, okay, here we go. Okay, he gets 20. I get um, 18. Oh no, wait a minute. My my skill is now 14, isn't it? So I get 20 as well. So we're both on 20. So luckily, because of that, because of the sword, I don't lose any health. He gets 20 again. I get. 18. So this time he does wound me. So he gets 20 again, and I get 18. Just put a comma there. So my stamina goes down by two points. Um, oh, a little bit worrying. Um, okay, he gets six. That's um, 15. 
I get 5, that's 19, so 15 to 19, so I finally draw blood. So he's now down to 7. He gets um, 14, and I get 24. So 14 to 24. So I easily win that, so he's down to 5. He gets 15, I get 23. So 15 to 23. Another hit to me. He gets 12, I get 21. So 12 to 21. Another hit to me. Hopefully last attack round. He gets 15, I get 25. So. 15 to 25 because my skill is now 14 amazingly so he is dead that's the end of Mr. Minotaur goodbye and good riddance okay if you continue fighting and kill him turn to 258 yes we did so my health is a bit low you sort through the broken pots and find little of interest uh, the liquid looks smells and tastes like water the coins in the pot... I thought water doesn't smell of anything. Um, the coins in the pot are a fraud. Eight genuine gold pieces lie on the surface of the pile, and you may take these, which I will. So that puts my gold up to... 45. I don't know if I'll ever use it, though. I mean, it's pretty useless. Um... Um, and you may take these, but underneath are merely painted pieces of pot. As you tip the vase out, it slips and breaks. A red-coloured key appears, hidden inside a false bottom in the bowl. You may take this key. It is inscribed with the number 111. And we will, so... Um, red key 111. That's what we needed. We need that key. You may rest here and eat some provisions. You may add two luck points for defeating the Minotaur. I'm going to eat two provisions um, because um, it's near the end of the game and um, I might as well use them up. So I'll put my my stamina up to 15 and just put these down to 7. There we go, because I have loads left. Okay, um, finally you leave the room turn to 54. So I'll just write in here, that's where I was, so... Um, paragraph 54, next, so pretty much saving my game, as it were. Um, so we have keys that we need, and we have the green jewel, and we even have a potion of invisibility. Um, Oh yeah, I forgot to uh, to roll the six again um, after I did the moon shield. Doesn't really matter. I didn't really need it. Um, he only hurt me once, but uh, I suppose it. You know, I forgot to do it. Um, what am I doing now? Um, yeah. Anyway, that's the end of uh, this part. In the next part, I'll most likely be completing the game. So thank you for watching. And at the start of the next video, I will be doing, um, I'll be going to paragraph 54. Thanks again, and bye-bye.